vinyl fans. Welcome to another episode of Let's Clean a Record. We're going to try something a little different for you today. Obviously, this is our stereo system. You old audiophiles like me will probably know all these components, but we'll have a complete list for you in the description below. You might notice something a little bit different about our system. Specifically, why are there so many amplifiers? We have one mono block here, a stereo amplifier here, the other mono block here, and what is this down here? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. The pros and the cons of an active bi system. Let's get to it. Okay, I think the best way to describe the difference between a standard system, which is 99 point something percent of all the stereo systems out there, and an active bi system is to follow the signal path. So let's start with a standard system, right? We have a source. It can be a cassette tape, it can be a streaming service, it could be a compact disc. A vinyl record. It could be a vinyl record, that's right. Then we're gonna have an interconnect, right, that takes us to a preamp. And by the way, for our purposes, we're gonna assume that we have separates here, separate preamp from amplifiers. Now the preamp obviously allows you to choose what source you would like to hear and it includes a volume control. And once the signal leaves there, it goes directly to our amplifiers. Now, I'm just going to draw one circle here, but let's assume that this is a stereo amp. So it's kind of two in one box. Once the signal, now amplified, leaves the amplifier via uh, speaker cables, it's going to go to the speakers, right? But before it hits those drivers, we have what we call a passive crossover on each speaker. Now that is the key to the difference between a standard setup and a biamp setup. So what happens when the signal hits those passive crossovers? Two main things are accomplished. The first is the frequency is split. How it is split and how many times it is split depends upon the kind of speaker that you're using. Let's assume that we have a two-way speaker, probably the most common. So we'll just draw a little box. There's your woofer, there's your mid and high. Ditto over here. So, there's wires connecting those passive crossovers to those drivers. The idea is that you're gonna set the frequency crossover, whatever is optimal for the two speakers that are involved in this particular setup there and the slope and the slope is just the rate at which the frequency drops off after it is split you can have a slope that drops off very dramatically one that's a little more gentle one that's extremely gentle but that's the way it works on a standard setup and one of the things you should notice is there is a ton of wire in those crossovers it's all coiled up and then there's capacitors and resistors and so forth that do the job of splitting that signal and setting the slope that's the standard. 99% plus of all systems out there work just like that. Now let's follow the signal path for a bi system. We'll just say bi. Okay, obviously you still have your source. Interconnect to your preamp, just like that. But when the signal leaves the preamp, rather than going directly to the amplifier, it's going to go to an active crossover like that. In our case, we're using one made by Pure Audio Project, designed by Nelson Pass, a legend in the audio industry, designed specifically for Pure Audio Project speakers. But there are others out there. I think the most famous is probably from a company called Marchland. But the idea behind an active crossover is before the signal gets to the amplifiers, we're going to do our splitting and our, set our slopes within this box. I have the lid off of the active crossover just to give you a little peek of what it looks like inside. One of the things you'll notice is a decided lack of coiled up wires. You can see that you use a very tiny little screwdriver to change your frequency points and your slopes. That's so cool. That's how that works. If you were to go to something like the Marchland, which is fine quality active crossover, uh, they tend to put all of the controls on the front panel. But this is a really beautiful active crossover and designed specifically for Pure Audio Project speakers. 
that's a nice extra bonus too. The active crossover, it's electronic, it's plugged in. There are different ways to do it, but there are knobs or potometers or some way of changing the frequency cutoffs and setting the slopes. So once we do that inside that box, we're then going to have, if we're biamping the system, we're going to have not two, but four wires coming out of the active crossover directly to the amplifiers. So two on each side. We got amplifier one, amplifier two, and ditto in your stereo setup, of course. Amplifier one, amplifier two. Now here's the interesting part. The signal has already been split. So this amplifier gets connected not to that passive crossover we spoke of. And let's do our little speaker box here. It goes directly to that driver. And this one goes directly to that driver. So it is serving only that driver there. The signal is maintained, it's pure, between the amp and the driver. There's nothing in the way other than that speaker cable. And ditto for the other side. It's exactly the same way. So that is the basic difference. You're, you're setting the frequency crossover points. You're setting the slopes before the amplifiers, not after them. That's the difference between a bi-amp and a standard system. Very cool. So... Why would anyone want to do this? Why would you want to bypass your passive crossovers and utilize an active or electronic crossover to buy up the system? Let's talk pros and cons. Let's talk cons first. The most obvious is price. In order to accomplish this, you're going to need another set of amplifiers. Of course, that's probably the most expensive thing. You're going to need another set of interconnects, another set of speaker cables. You're going to need shelves on which to set those amplifiers. And of course, you're gonna need the electronic crossover itself. So cost is clearly one of the cons. Another potential con is the fact that you have to set the crossover points and the associated slopes within the active crossover. You have to do that yourself. Now, I actually think that's kind of fun. You get to tune it in just the way you like it, but it can be daunting for some people. Uh, another, a third uh, potential downside is you, once you have come out of your amplifiers, you have to be able to connect via speaker wire directly to the driver that that amplifier is serving, meaning you have to have access to that driver. In a sealed box, that can be difficult and might require some modification. Very easy with our Pure Audio Project speakers because they're dipoles, they're open on the back. But those are the downsides. So what are the, what are the pros? Well, a lot of guys, myself included, think it sounds better when you do this right, and I really do. So that's a big one. Secondly, the, you, you're, in bypassing the passive crossover, you are bypassing a ton of wire. Think about how much effort and cost guys will put into just a foot and a half of speaker wire when you've got 10 times that much in each of your passive crossovers. So bypassing all that wire, I think, is, is a pro. And then it allows the amplifier to only drive the driver that it is serving. So I think there's a purity of the signal path when you do it that way. And probably the biggest reason is it allows you to get away with a lot less power. You can try those single-ended triode, directly heated triode amplifiers if, you do, if you've been thinking about doing that. You don't necessarily have to. You can use low-powered solid state amps like Pass Labs. In fact, Nelson Pass, who designed our active crossover, makes excellent quality, low wattage uh, solid state amps. I'm a fan of the single-ended uh, directly heated triodes. So we're going to show you what we use and an upcoming change that we're planning. Here's one other thing too. It's a lot of fun. It's one of the reasons we have separate components is we get to mix and match and try to create the sound that sounds best to us. This offers you a bit more flexibility in that regard. But let's take a look at our single-ended triode amps and we'll show you exactly what we're talking about there. Okay, fellas, let's take a closer look at the amplifiers that we're using in our bi-amp setup. I'll start with our stereo amp here in the middle. This is from Airtight out of Japan, and it is a 300B-based amplifier design. Again, single-ended triode. 
you can see the 300B tubes here. They happen to be Western Electrics. This amp puts out about seven watts a channel. If you were using that through passive crossovers, you would need very efficient speakers to get away with that. But because we're using active crossovers, we have plenty of power with that. This particular amp is driving our mid-range and high-frequency driver, which in our case is a Voxative, which is part of the Pure Audio Project speakers. In fact, if we look at our other amps, which in this case are monoblocks, Triode Lab amplifiers, they're out of Canada, great company, 2A3 based amps, 2A3 being the type of tube that's used right there, they put out about three and a half to four watts a channel, so even less power. Interestingly, we have the lower powered amps driving the woofers and the 300B amps driving the mid-range and high frequency speakers. So the main point I want to make is that using an active crossover and bi-amp system, you can get away with very low powered amplifiers. I am particularly a fan of the directly heated single-ended triodes. There's a magical quality to the way they sound, a realism that I just have never heard repeated on any other style of amplifier. Doesn't mean you have to use SET amps. You can use whatever you like in a bi-amp setup. But to me, that's one of the main advantages. You can get away with these flea-powered amps. Something that we'll feature in an upcoming episode is a new amplifier. That's right, I'm going to be putting the Airtight up for sale, probably on U.S. Audio Mart or something like that, uh, maybe through the Steve Hoffman forums. It's not because I think it's a bad amplifier. In fact, many would argue this is one of the finest amplifiers ever made. The transformers are legendary. Airtight has a wonderful reputation. And on its own, this is just a glorious sounding amp. But the truth is, I have just fallen in love with the sound of the 2A3 amps. And because we're using this system in the active crossover, I have no problem having only 3.5 watts on each of the drivers. It's plenty of power, uh, particularly for the volumes at which we listen and the efficiency of our Pure Audio Project speakers. So look for this to go on sale, and it'll be replaced with another 2A3 based amp, probably from Triode Labs out of Canada. In fact, I'm sure. I'm just not sure exactly what model will replace those. I'm in the process of choosing that now. But I'll miss the airtight, but I just love the 2A3s. So that's what we're going to go with. All right, fellas. We'll see you at the next record.